Maths education is no silver bullet for economic growth. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has criticised the anti-maths mindset and announced plans to require maths study until age 18. The idea that technical education drives economic growth is really nothing new. Throughout the Cold War, there were these consistent fears about the West falling behind in maths and science education. In fact, a confidential CIA report in 1959 reported that an extraordinary 90% of all graduates were specialising in science and technical fields. But in reality, this failed to translate into a strong economy. A highly educated population could not make up for a socialist system that was closed to ideas and limited trade. Prosperity is driven by building an institutional and cultural environment that embraces economic freedom and entrepreneurship. It's difficult to achieve economic growth when you suppress human ingenuity, like we do in the UK through the planning system, sky-high taxes, and strangling red tape. In practice, Rishi's plans to extend maths education could prove counterproductive. Students will be forced to spend more time in maths class, but that doesn't mean they'll have less time to study other subjects of greater importance and relevance to them, taking away choice and adding stress to students' lives. They'll likely inevitably be taught by non-specialist teachers due to ongoing shortages of maths teachers. This could lower the overall quality of education and instruction for everyone. If we really want to boost education, the government should think about more meaningful solutions. This could mean decentralising curriculums, as is proven successful in Singapore, or boosting school choice to facilitate more educational competition.